down with your Friends, we're gathered together in the sight of God to witness and bless the joining of Andrew and Stephanie in the holy bond of marriage. The covenant of marriage is from God, given to us so that we might experience this joy of unconditional love. Andrew and Stephanie, in their devotion and respect and love for each other, wish to unite and dedicate themselves to each other's happiness and well-being as life partners. With his presence and power, Jesus 
graced a wedding in Cana of Galilee where he performed his first miracle, turning water into wine, indicating that marriage ought to be celebrated. And also, ought not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently. And then, with his sacrificial act on Calvary, Jesus also gave us the example for how we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Andrew and Stephanie come to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. And you are all here witnesses to this union. And more than that, Andrew and Stephanie have said that they see you as the people that they trust to love them and support them in this moment and in the future of their marriage because of this. I'm about to ask this question, who gives these two to be married to each other? And here's what they would like you to do. In a moment, I'll ask you to all stand and I'll ask that question, who gives these two to be married to each other? And they've asked that you respond, we do. Because as friends, as family, to be in a spot like this, you are the ones that they look to to remind them of the importance of this day, to remind them of the sacredness of these vows that they'll take and to stand ready to support them. So, all right, we'll ask you to join in this. Would you please stand and be ready to answer? Who gives these two to be married to each other? We do. Right, you may be seated. So Andrew and Stephanie chose Ecclesiastes 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12 to read today. It says this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? The one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And today we're here to give witness to the strength of that truth. And we're here to celebrate. And before we go on anymore, I just I want to ask you to just look at the people here who stood up for you and said, we're the ones who give you our support. We're the ones who stand behind this marriage. We're the ones who stand for you from today on to the future. I'll be certain here that a marriage is not just two people coming together to start a family, to begin something new. Marriage is a connection between all kinds of people. There are all different things tied up in this. And so today, we're going to celebrate Stephanie. We're going to celebrate Andrew. It's going to be a day that these two will remember for the longest time. So thank you for being a part of that. And if your marriage is like every other marriage out there, you're going to have all sorts of moments to celebrate together in the future. And I will tell you that the way that you rejoice together is a witness to the bond of this union that begins today. And if your marriage is like every other marriage, there's going to be all kinds of times when you don't remotely feel like celebrating and you don't remotely feel like rejoicing, and that's just the truth of marriage. But this scripture you selected to be read today this is for celebrating and not and everything in between because what you're recognizing here is it's not just you agreeing to marry him and you agreeing to marry her. These are people who die, tie us together and it is the Lord who brings us closer together than we can ever imagine. And that's huge because in marriage, it is going to take everything that you have and more in order to live into this fully. And the truth is, Andrew, you don't have enough on your own strength to love Stephanie the way that she deserves. And Stephanie, you don't have enough on your own strength to love Andrew the way that he deserves. And that's okay. It's the way this is supposed to be. It is God who calls us to rest on his strength. It is God who invites us to trust in him as we move forward. And I love this scripture because well, throughout the scriptures, there are these three words that are often quoted and, and referred to in Greek, of these three different ways to talk about love, which we only have one word, love, and we use it for all kinds of things. You two love each other, 
We love that there's air conditioning in a little bit. You love board games. It's all different though, right? It's all, it's all different. Um, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And so I, I tell you, listen to these three different types of love that are often referred to in the Bible. So there's Eros. This is the romantic love, the, the passionate love between husband and wife. This is your ooey, gooey, emotional. It's the kind of love that makes you give really cute nicknames to each other that everybody else says, oh, gross, don't, don't, <laughs> right? This is what, this is your passion that burns for one another, that unites you here. And there are times when that is the level of love that drives a marriage. And that's a great thing. There's filial love. Filial love is the bond of partnership, the bond of friendship. And in the Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, depending on whichever uh, translation you're reading there, mm -hmm. the husband often calls his wife and says, here you are, my lover, my friend. And are these two friends or what? We see that big time in their relationship and in their marriage. And there are times when this bond of friendship is what you're going to feel most driving you together. And then there's agape love. This is perfect love. This is the love that when Jesus asked people if they would be able to have agape love for him and for each other, they said, no, I don't have any ability to do this. And Jesus never chastised them for it. I think there's, there's wisdom in that. It's, it's God who gives us and grants us his power as he sends the Holy Spirit. That we can love each other perfectly. And what that really means is sacrificially. And you lay your life down for one another as we move forward. And there are going to be times when it is that romantic, passionate love that is your driver or your, your friendship, partnership love that is the driver of this marriage. Or there are going to be times, and this happens in every marriage, where you do not feel the passion. And you do not feel partnership or friendship. It is in those moments that you rely on this third love, this agape love, to know that, Andrew, you are perfectly loved, completely, because of who God is and because of who you are to him. Stephen, you are perfectly loved completely because of who God is and who you are to him. And he is the one who enables us to sacrifice self and to pursue one another. And so, to recognize that this is what God is calling you into, to step into this cord of three strands that is not easily broken, I ask you both if you will strive to live into this concept of marriage that you step into today. Andrew, do you enter into this holy union with Stephanie and honor her by laying down your life in love for her? as Christ Jesus laid down his life for his church to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, being faithful to her as long as you both shall live. If so, I do. I do. Stephanie, do you enter into this holy union with Andrew and honor him by laying down your life in love for him as Christ Jesus laid down his life for his church to love him, to comfort him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, being faithful to him as long as you both shall live. If so, I do. I do. We're going to exchange these rings. These rings are an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace signifying to us the uniting of this man and woman in holy marriage through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Bless, O oh Lord, the giving and receiving of these rings, that they who wear them may live in your peace and continue in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, Andrew, we'll start with you. You can repeat after me. Stephanie, I give you this ring. Stephanie, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All right. Stephanie. 
Andrew, I give you this ring. Andrew, I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's pray. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may this God keep you in love with each other, and so the peace of God may abide in your home, that you may go and serve your God and neighbor together in all that you do. Amen. So now, that Andrew and Stephanie have in the presence of God given themselves to each other by solemn vows and declared their love by the joining of hands and giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. And now, you may kiss your bride.